I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today we're going to be doing the final steps on our beetle bag. So we are going to be putting our binding on and our little strap. I am thrilled the way this came out and if you'd like to see how I finished it off, stay tuned and I'll show you how. I have sewn you can see I still have this clip so that I don't end up sewing it in. It's one of those things that I really like about Wonder Clips. So what I've done at this point is I have sewn all of my binding all the way around. And I think you can see it. All right. Now, the directions called for it to zigzag all the way around. I ended up straight stitching it, too. And the reason why I did, because when I folded it over like this and I... If I pulled it that binding tightly, I could see my zigzags and I didn't want to. So that's what I did. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach some more fusible, that quarter inch fusible tape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it very close to the edge of my binding, all right? This is the folded edge of your binding. How I'm gonna do this is, let me get my iron in a different position is I tried to think which was the easiest way. If it was easiest to do it with the fabric like this or the fabric like this. So I'm gonna start trying it this way and see how easy it goes. I'll turn it. I'm gonna start trying it this way to see how easy it goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my fusible and I'm gonna lay it as close to the edge as I can get it. You know what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first press this a little bit just so that I've got that nice crisp edge, all right? I'm gonna go around and just press it first. Just a quick little iron, I guess, or, yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna take my fusible and I'm gonna lay it right down next to the edge. Keep, try to keep this in camera for you. But see, I've got it really close to the edge and I'm gonna just tap it down. And then I'll continue. Just hold, see how I'm holding it with my thumb in my middle finger and just kind of putting it where I want it to be and then pressing it. I'm going to do that all the way around my bag. All right? So I'll keep right on going here. This is where it's going to get tough because it's kind of hard to um, manipulate these corners a little bit. But I think it'll be just fine. So here I go. A little bit more. Yeah, it is pretty easy doing it from this side. I think when I get to the corner here, I'm gonna flip it over. Let me show you. I'm gonna flip it around this way. Did you like that spin all the way around? Yeah, I am gonna flip it this way and then press it like this. Just cause I think it'll, it's making it a little bit easier to get around the corner. This, and, and I can't seem to move as fast doing it this way. So I think when I get back to the straight parts, I'm gonna, I may flip it right back over again and do it that way. Whoops. Trying to keep this in camera view for you too. And that's not always the easiest to do. All right. I hope you can see that. Now I'm gonna flip it back this way. And hold it. And press. And I want it as close to the edge as I can get it. All right, there we go. I'm gonna now try it with my Taylor's ham, one of my 
um, one of my tailor's pieces and see if that helps doing these corners a little bit easier. I, you, you saw me do one without it, so you know you can. Let's see if this is any less fuss work for you. I feel safer with my fingers, I will tell you that. I do, I do feel like my fingers are a little bit better protected or maybe not at so much risk of getting burned. Here we go. Yeah, I almost think that works a little bit easier. Maybe because I'm, of course it would be nice if I was on camera for you. I almost think that's working a little easier for me. Just using that tailor's ham to um, hold the piece up over or around the corners. Hmm. So here we go down a flat spot again, or a straight line. See what I'm doing? I'm taking this corner and pushing it over and then pulling that out. See, so I'm, I am manipulating it a little bit, but it'll be okay in the end. Right, so here I go around this corner. Yep. Now I am going to, and I'm going to attach another piece. So now that I've done that, this is the really cool part. What we're going to do is we're going to release this. We're going to take just a normal straight pin, okay? And we're going to score the paper. And then we can easily pull the paper off our fusible. Now that I've pulled all the paper off, my next thing that I need to do before I go any farther is I need to attach my handle. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna attach my handle right here. All right, you can see now I've got my handle attached. And what I did was I attached with my center seam, because remember we seamed this, facing up, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of clip this together right here so that it stays out of my way for a few minutes. And now I'm going to take my binding and I am going to put a couple of my little wonder clips in it just because I want to kind of hold it a little bit in place so it makes it a little bit easier for me to press it. But this is really a neat way to do it because what's going to end up happening is we're going to be tacking our binding in place. So it will already be a little bit, um, it'll be kind of tacked down. So when we go to finish it, any way you want to finish it, whether you're going to hand stitch it down or um, machine stitch it down, it'll already be there. So now I'm going to just go through with my iron, press it down here in a few spots. And see, it's just gonna stay right there for me so that it's nice and easy when I go to hand stitch it down. I just think that's a really neat tip to be able to, you know, get something in place so that you're not having to have to manipulate it when you're working by hand. There's my piece. Just gonna make sure that it's in place. Kind of sticky, sticky. All right. So I'm gonna finish doing that all the way around. And then I am going to get it stitched down. And once I get it stitched down, I'll be back to show you what it looks like. And we will turn this inside out like this. And look, isn't that just going to be adorable? 
I just think it's gonna be so cute. So I'll be back in a few minutes, okay? My beetle bag's all done, and I wanna show you how I ended up finishing my binding. I took my binding and I did hand stitch it down. I will tell you that hand stitching through the soft and stable isn't the easiest thing, but to me it was worth it to do it. I also want to tell you that when you go to put, oh, I got a thread. When you go to put your handle on, you want to put your handle on here with your seam face up if you put your seam in the center like I did. That way when you turn it over, because it's like this, let me show you. It's very easy to, to manipulate back and forth. See, my center seam is right here. That way when I folded it again, when I turned it around to the other side, I don't have my seam on the front of my handle, which to me was important, okay? So I'm gonna open it back up and I'm gonna show you how to put your inserts in. Now that it's time for inserts, bring back your center Velcro pieces. And then here's my inserts. Now there's a total of eight bags here. So you've got lots of room to put a lot of notions in. I pick up my first piece of Velcro and I just pull my tab inside of it. I'm gonna pick up my second one. And I did kind of fold it a little bit just to get it inside that hole. All right, pull it around. Here we go. And then just lay it down. And now look, I've got all of my zipper bags. These zippers are really nice because they're easy to get a hold of. So I think if you've got a little bit of arthritis, you won't have a problem with it either. The other thing is, is I see this as an adorable bag for kids, especially for like in the car with little things to do to keep them busy. There are two really nice, big, deep pockets and then your pin cushion. Now, if you're making this as a bag for kids, I would make this another pocket so that they could put pencils in it maybe, or pens or whatever, markers or, okay. Now to fold it up, I take it and I roll my pin cushion first, then I bring this up and over, all right? Then I just take it and I flip it over. Here's my, then I put my, long strap through it and then I just pick it up again right here and velcro it and see you've got a lot of nice room in there to be able to put different notions in there without it being overly big and then there's my handle I love my handle I just think that's so cute so that is our beetle bag thank you so much for joining me while we finished up our beetle bag I just think these are the cutest things around. Now the kits, which include just the notions to do this bag and the pattern are on my website. I also have put on my website the refills for the inside plastic pockets if you'd like to make more than one of them. I think they would be absolutely adorable Christmas gifts for friends and family. I just think they're the cutest. Now this one I am going to be using as a sewing bag, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be making another one because I really want to put a first aid kit in my car. And I think that would be just the cutest little first aid kit around. I've heard that people are using them as little bags for their grandchildren, for little toys to play with. Um, one friend is making one to take to church with her so that her granddaughter has something to play with while they sit in church. So I just think it's the cutest bag around. So thank you so much for joining me. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel and make sure that you click the little bell up at the top so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. We've got more projects coming up this year. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page also Margaret Lewin quilting. It is a lot of fun with a lot of positive feedback from fellow quilters. So if you get a chance, don't forget to check that out. So 
Thank you so much for joining me today while we finished up our Beetle Bag by Abby Lane Quilts, which I would like to put a special thank you so much for letting me do this bag with everybody. It's been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. The fabric that I used on this is Tula Pink's fabric from Free Spirit. And again, I just think it's the cutest. I'm very pleased with the way it came out. So again, thanks for sticking around and I will see you again really soon with our next project. Music